you're watching Gears. Brought to you by Holly Performance Products. Fuel your passion. And Cornwell Tools, the choice of professionals. In the early 1950s, America was thriving. After the bleak years during World War II, the 50s brought a sense of excitement and hope that the nation desperately needed. And people celebrated. By having kids. <laughs> A lot of kids. So by the late 1950s, energy-driven teens were racing their so-called hot rods down the streets for money and bragging rights. Car clubs were springing up everywhere and creating a dangerous culture that quickly became the target of politicians and local cops. Clearly, something needed to be done to channel all that energy safely off the street. But instead of just converting an old airstrip or dry lake into a racetrack, the city of Long Beach decided to build a track specifically for this new sport called drag racing. And when the local Lions Club volunteered to help raise the $45,000 needed to build it, the decision was made to call it Lions Drag Strip. And in that humble beginning was the start of what would become arguably the most influential racetrack in automotive history and a perfect playground for young hot rodders. But to tell the story of Lions isn't easy because it closed in 1972. Fortunately, there was a young guy named Rick Lorenzen who was so influenced by Lions as a kid that when he grew up, he decided he was gonna build a massive museum in Long Beach with the history of Lions inside of it. Here's the story. We wanted to live our youth. Yeah. And that's what this is all about. Oh, you're definitely doing it. Yeah. You're definitely doing it. And, and this, this is America as we yeah. know it. Of course, every playground needs a top dog to make sure it runs properly. And into that role was the charismatic Mickey Thompson, a man that was not only a record-setting racer himself, but also a man with a vision on how the sport of drag racing needed to run. And in October of 1955, Lions opened to a massive crowd. And the roar of that track became the heartbeat of the whole California car scene that subsequently spread to the rest of the nation. The plan to get the kids off the streets had worked, at least for a while. In those early days, there were so many people and car clubs wanting to race that the cars would have to be run four at a time. So everybody had a chance to run and challenge each other. But it wasn't just the kids that were racing. No, professional racers began to hit the scene and brought with them wild and crazy contraptions that went faster and faster, and Top Fuel and the Exhibition Car were born. And believe me, you never knew what you might see here or what might happen when these guys mashed the throttle. Another favorite class of racers were the gassers, where the guys would stuff a massive, blown gasoline-powered engine into the smallest, lightest bodies that they could find. Bantams, Henry J's, and Fiat's were popular. But the 40 and 41 Willys Coupes were hands down the most famous, as run by Stone Woods and Cook, and Big John Mess Manahan, and many others. This became known as the Gasser Wars, and people ate it up. And it was the first time that the cars started to look as good as they ran. They had candy paint and, and chrome and polished metal. So popular were the old Willys Coupes that everyone, including young Rick Lorenzen, picked one up in the hopes of building one into a fast race car. Willys were predominant in gassers, but the look of them, yeah, 
you know, the uh, they were called the poor man's Ford. Yeah. <laughs> and, well. and I have my original one that I bought here in 1960. Yeah. Which is still needs to be finished, but it never will be. <laughs> Just got into Willie's and Lions Drag Strip, and that's where I spend a lot of my time growing up there. But as popular as the gassers were, Top Fuel was still the main attraction. And once the fuel ban was lifted, the Top Fuel dragsters began to push the envelope of speed again and again with drivers like Ivo and Prudhomme and McQueen and Garlet and so many others laying down smoke and times that was mind-boggling for the 1960s. In a world of economic uncertainty, there will always be a need for quality tools and people who can use them. That's why becoming a Cornwell tool dealer is one of the best career moves you can make. With routes available all across the nation, it's a great way to be your own boss, supply high quality tools to professionals, and make some real money. If you're tired of working for someone else, have the drive to succeed, and want a career that can be successful no matter what happens on Wall Street, there's a Cornwell tool truck with your name on the side. Hey, welcome back to Gears and our feature on Lions Drag Strip and how it became the testing ground for automotive performance in the 1960s. Now, when we left off, we were talking about the Top Fuel Dragster and its dominance in performance and speed, but there was a problem. The less a dragster looked like the average car that you could own and drive, the less people could relate to it. Even with custom bodywork and shapes, the top fuelers were starting to look more like something from another planet and less like something in the parking lot. The answer to that was the stalker and the super stock class. Now these were basically factory muscle cars that looked exactly like what was sitting in the parking lot, but they had factory-backed racing engines. These became the driving force behind the muscle car wars that were happening on the streets across America. But then a funny thing happened, literally. By altering the wheelbase and the engine placement on these stock cars, they took on a look that was funny. <laughs> and from that term, the funny car was born, and a whole new racing class took off, powered by the craziness of the 1960s. Characters were created, and everyone had a nickname. The bounty hunter, the swamp rat, the snake, the mongoose, the Hawaiian jungle gym, these were now the people that fans were coming to see. And the epic battles fought by these legendary drivers in their funny cars and dragsters were truly the golden era of hot rodding and racing. But it wasn't all fun and games. It was dangerous too. And that was exciting. The rush and the adrenaline of the burnout and the launch never erased the potential for disaster that was always hanging there over every run. And things did go bad, a lot. Everybody, we can please stay out of there if he's in any kind of... 
However, it wasn't just the racing that was going on at Lions. On any given weekend, you could buy a Rat Fink t-shirt from Ed Big Daddy Roth. Or see people like George Barris. Carol Shelby or Vic Edelbrock, you name them, they were probably there testing new products or tweaking on a race car. Everybody was there. Nothing and nobody was off limits. It was magic, especially if you were a kid. Unfortunately, nothing lasts forever. And the times and drag racing, they were a changing. And by 1972, the only thing that was louder than the sound coming from lions on the weekend was the complaints of the excessive noise from the people that had moved in next to the drag strip. Finally, the Harbor Commission had had enough and they pulled the 30-day permit that the track had been operating under for 18 years. And just like that, the mighty roar of lions was silenced. But it wasn't stopped. Fortunately, the sport of drag racing continued to move forward and grow, and all of those kids that grew up at Lions, well, they had kids themselves, and they told them the stories of what it was like to drive something like this back in the day. Others, like Rick Lorenzen, may not have finished that first race car, but he did build a state-of-the-art museum dedicated to the history of Lions Drag Strip. And inside it, you're gonna find a full-size reproduction of the launch area, and many of the actual cars on display, along with thousands of historic artifacts from the people that actually made lions roar. Now, if you're not into racing history, that's okay, because in another room is a massive collection of custom, classic, and muscle cars, custom displays, a 50s diner, and even a vintage toy store full of those toys that you always wanted but you never got. Racing really started in Southern California yeah. with the Dry Lakes back in the 40s. Yeah. And we're just honoring all the venues in racing. So if you're into cars or racing at all, or just American history, the Lions Automobilia Museum is some place that you need to go if you're ever in the Long Beach area. You'll be glad you did. Ever wish you could reduce that dead pedal feeling in your vehicle? The AMP 2.0 Throttle Booster can fix that. It takes the factory accelerator signal and remaps the sensitivity, reducing the delay for better throttle response and more on-demand power. Take control with an AMP 2.0 Throttle Booster. Redesigned from the ground up, MSD's Ultra 6A boasts a significant size reduction, making it 60% smaller, 50% lighter, and 35% more efficient. Find out about MSD's latest products at holly.com. Tool Tech, brought to you by Cornwell Tools, the choice of professionals. When it comes to wear and tear, nothing is subject to more damage than your drill bits because they're cutting through metal under pressure while fighting high heat. And that combination can dull them down pretty quick. One solution is to drill a smaller pilot hole first, then move up to your larger bit. Now this will take some of the stress off of the larger bit and make it last longer. Well, what if I told you that you did not need to do it that way anymore? That there was a drill bit out there that would do all of that automatically and eliminate the need for a pilot hole. And you'd say, show me. Well, there they are. These are the Tempest drill bits from Cornwell and at first glance, they look normal until you get a close look at the tips. Each one starts with a tiny point and then graduates in small steps that not only provide quicker and better cutting, it also keeps the heat down with less friction and more airflow. 
The hardened steel and special tip will keep these things cutting for years and will outlast several sets of traditional bits. If you drill a lot of holes in metal, you need the Tempest drill bits from Cornwell. And now, parts bin. One of the most popular custom touches that you can do to a vehicle is to tuck the bumper up against the body to get rid of that ugly gap that it came with from the factory. The only problem is with bumper tucking is it requires you to either redesign or fabricate brackets to pull the bumper up against the body. Well, if you have a 73 to 79 Ford with a style side bed, you're in luck because LMC has got some brackets to help you mount a contoured rear sport bumper up against the body three quarters of an inch tighter than it was from the factory. Now, here's how the brackets work. There's two per side. As you can see, they're made out of heavy gauge 3 16 steel. Got nice bends, square holes, elongated holes, just like the factory. This bracket's got some nice bends, got some nice welds, very well put together. And this is how they bolt on. You'll notice one goes to the outside, one goes in the center. They bolt right to the frame, just like your original brackets. But there's no guesswork, there's no gap, and there's no fabrication on your part. So if you've got a Ford and you think it needs a little tuck in the bumper in the back, LMC's got the brackets to make it happen. You know, one of the most frustrating things you can run into when you're building a hot rod or a custom car or a kit car is finding the right weather stripping. <laughs> because obviously there's no OEM stuff available. So you end up going to a restoration place, finding some weather stripping and hoping and praying that it's gonna work. Steel Rubber said, ah, enough of that. So they came out with this street rod catalog. Now notice everything is laid out in nice, concise categories quarter window molding, hood bumpers, everything is very easy to find. Now, look at what we got here. Obviously, you have all the door weather stripping and windows and windshield and back glass and trunk and all of that stuff. But they also have this weird stuff like the center dividers and you've got the rubber weather stripping around a gear shifter and those rubber pedals you can't ever find body plugs, body mounting pads. I mean, they've got all of this little stuff that's just impossible to find. Listen, building a custom vehicle is a challenge. Finding the right weather stripping should not be. A successful automotive project takes planning and organization, but instead of using an old tablet or notebook, there's the Gears Deluxe Project Planning Book. This was designed to help you lay out a project, the parts, the tools, costs, and keep it organized with colored tabs, a pouch for receipts, and even a place to attach photos. If you decide to sell the vehicle, it serves as a complete history of what's been done. If you have a project or plan on starting one, the Gears Project Planning Book is the best way to lay it out and make it happen. Can't get enough gears? Make sure to check out the Tales of a Gearhead podcast, where Stacy brings a lifetime of automotive knowledge, friendships, and expertise to the listener. Also, check out our social media channels for updates and videos of Gears projects, as well as special contests, giveaways, and events. If you have a vehicle you want to enter into What Are You Working On, go to stacydavid.com and submit it. There's also the online store and tons of other Gearhead information that will encourage you to get out there, build something, and go drive it. And now, parts bin. There's no doubt that the 73 to 87 GM square body trucks are hot right now. And there's all kinds of aftermarket parts out there to help you build one of these things. But the one part that's been missing is the ability to put a modern five-speed transmission into a square body truck. Well, American Powertrain has got that figured out with this new ProFit HD kit. You gotta check this out. It starts with this massive Tremec TR4050 five-speed that has a super low first gear for giving you plenty of grunt on the bottom end. Then it has a nice tall top gear so you get good performance and economy on the interstate. And in the middle, you have a super tough transmission that'll handle up to 600 foot-pounds of torque. Now you can get it in a two-wheel drive version like this 
or a four-wheel drive version. Now check this out. This comes with the clock and ring, comes with the stub shaft, comes with all the bearings and seals and hardware to bolt this to your transfer case. Now, no matter which way you go, you get the bell housing and flywheel, clutch, pressure plate. You get your choice of manual or hydraulic throwout bearing. You get the transmission mount, you get the shifter, you get everything. And for those of you that have an automatic and think that you want to put a stick in it, well, they even have the pedal with the master cylinder and the reservoir, so you can do that. So if you have a 73 to 87 square body truck or blazer and you want to shift the gears by hand, now you can with this ProFit HD kit from American Powertrain. What are you working on? Brought to you by Woodward Fabrication, selling quality metal working equipment since 1966. Today's What Are You Working On comes from Donald and his daughter Myla, and they are up in Pennsylvania, and their project is a 1984 Pontiac Fiero. Now, you might be thinking, Fiero, what kind of project is that? It's actually a really cool one. Car's almost 40 years old, and there's a huge aftermarket out there for the Fiero. And he said that when his daughter Myla, she's 17 years old, she saw those flip up headlights, she had to have it. So off they were. Now the car is actually in really good shape, check it out. And they're basically just doing maintenance on it to get it running. So they've gone through, they've replaced the clutch, the ball joints, the struts, <laughs> flip up headlights, motor mounts, tie rod ends, all kinds of stuff. And he says that Myla does a lot of the work on the car. She is really into it and she loves this thing. Now he says it's really important that people realize that this is not going to be a show car. This is going to be a fun daily driver. So that's how they're setting it up. Man, what a great project and you're going to enjoy it. I'll tell you what, you get her out on a road course with this thing, you will be shocked how good a Fiero goes around the corners. I'm telling you. So to recognize a great father-daughter project, we're going to give you one of these manual bead rollers from Woodward Fab. And it's not only the bead roller, it's a whole bunch of dies to roll beads and flanges, all kinds of great stuff. Then we're going to give you a deluxe project planning book so you can keep track of everything that you've done to that Fiero. Then we're going to toss in a gears fender cover so you can protect that paint when you're working on that Fiero. Then we're going to toss in a Holly gift card so you can pick up some Holly products. And we're also going to give you a Hot Shot Secret gift card so you can get some of their products to use in that car as well. And then finally, we're going to give you a Copperhead die cast. Now, for the rest of you guys, if you want to get in on this and get your project featured on the show, you got to send it to us. Go to our website, go to Gears Nation, and submit it into What Are You Working On? The website's also the place to find out more information on any products you may have seen on the show, any Gears merchandise, and how to join Gears Nation. You can also see Gears episodes for free on our YouTube channel and become a channel member. That way you get bonus content and you get early access to all the new episodes. Also, don't forget to check us out on Amazon Prime for Gears and the Gears Restoration Series. Finally, don't forget to like us on Facebook and Instagram. And if you're a radio person, make sure you check out our podcast, Tales of a Gearhead. All right, that wraps it up for us today. Hopefully, this lights a fire under you to get out there, find yourself a project, and start wrenching on it. It can be a Fiero, it can be a hot rod, just needs to be something that you like. We'll see you next time.